Just like me, this laptop stand is stylish and sophisticated. Today we're going to be making this pretty cool laptop stand. Uh, this stand's got storage for your portable keyboards, uh, storage for your mouse, uh, you can put your power cords, notepads, pens, all that sort of stuff in here as well. Uh, it will bring your computer up to the proper working height so you're not looking down and getting a sore neck so your chiropractor is going to love you. Uh, for the finish, I've done something a little bit different so um, make sure you watch to the end of the video to see what this finish is like uh, and how, how we've applied it. Uh, it's a nice close to the wood finish that will last well with the heat from the computer. So uh, let's get stuck into it. So I've got my design that I drew up in Sketch and SketchUp for my template. Um, if anyone's interested in learning how to use a little bit of SketchUp, just put a comment in the uh, below, and I'll uh, I might do a little tut tutorial on it if we get a bit of interest. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, stick this on here with a bit of spray adhesive, and uh, then we can cut it out. And I'll just let that dry for you know, five or ten minutes, and then we can start cutting it out. I'm using three quarter inch plywood for the template and I'm going to use my scroll saw to cut that out. Uh, the scroll saw will give me a nice smooth edge that I won't need to, I hopefully won't need to sand too much and I won't need to do much about that. Um, if you don't have a scroll saw, you can use a jigsaw will be fine or a coping saw. Well that came out pretty well. Uh, a little bit of sanding just to get rid of some of the lumps and bumps from my poor scroll sawing skills. Um, I've just sprayed a little bit of uh, mineral turpentine on, on the uh, template and then waited about a minute and it should just peel straight off. Okay, I've got all my blanks cut out now, um, and so I'm just going to screw the template onto, onto these and take it to the router and uh, finish it off. Okay, so I've got the template screwed onto my piece of wood and we're ready to cut it out. Uh, there's two ways to go. You can use a router bit that has the ball bearing on the bottom. Um, I was going to go this way, that way I can just sort of creep up on the cut. Um, but unfortunately, as soon as I started it up, the little grub screw went flying out the windows in there. So um, what I've got is a big long router bit with the ball bearing on top, which will run around the template. Um, I know it's not ideal to have this much um, exposed, but I'm going to use a gripper just to keep plenty of room from my hand and the, and the bit. Uh, so safety equipment on and we'll cut it and see how we go. Um, the, the rough dimensions of this, it doesn't really matter, it's up to you, but how I've made mine, it's roughly about uh, 6 inches tall, 150mm or 150mm tall, uh, approximately 12 inches or just a little bit over, or a little bit under 300mm long, and um, yeah, it's come up pretty good. So now all I've got to do is glue it together. Okay, so what I did on my template, uh, I put a number 1 on one side and a number 2 on the other. And uh, when I was screwing to the piece of the wood, I did all of them on number one, and then one on number two, and then that way I've got uh, no screw holes showing on either side. Okay, now I'm ready to start gluing this sucker up. Um, I'm just going to do three at a time, just so I can make sure I get the alignment right, um, and the won't slip around too much. I think it should be just easier with uh, just doing three. Okay, so these are all glued up now. Um, before I do the final assembly, I'm just gonna take some time and just sand the inside, because uh, it's a little bit easier now. Uh, what I've got are these little inserts that go onto your drill press, um, and act like a spindle sander. And um, there's, a, there's a few different types. There's some with a sleeve that slips over. This one just uses normal sandpaper. Um, I reckon these are the ones to get because you can use whatever grit you want. It's easy to get from any hardware store. You don't have to special order any sleeves. Um, I've got various different sizes. Um, yeah, so it's good. And oscillating spindle sander.
okay, we got it all glued up. Uh, it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with things. Uh, now for the best part of woodworking, sanding. No, not really. But um, yeah, I'm just going to give it a sand, um, just clean it all up. Because we around the corners, we're essentially uh, routing end grain. I have got a little bit of tear out here, so uh, we'll just try and clean that up the best we can and uh, see how it goes. Um, if you watch the, the bench video as well, uh, a few weeks ago, you'll notice we put the dog holes, so things like this are, are very handy. Holding the material still. Okay, now I've sanded it up, I've sanded it up to 1000 grit um, with the finishing sander and it's feeling pretty smooth. The end grain's looking pretty cool. Looks kind of like leaves, I think. Looks pretty good, I like that. Um, now for the finish, I'm gonna do something different that probably isn't commonly used. Uh, I'm gonna use a hard burnishing oil. So um, uh, 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 what this does is, uh, it looks like a normal oil, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna burnish it. So we're gonna use sandpaper to rub that into the wood, which will, is called burnishing, and it's gonna fill in any little imperfections, any little nicks, any little gaps, anything like that. We'll smooth it out, and we, can, we should be able to polish this up to a nice sort of satin finish. So um, yeah, so what we're gonna do, the first step, is to apply the oil, uh, and then we'll let it soak in for half an hour, an hour, and we'll do a second coat, and then we'll let that soak in, and then we'll uh, do the burnishing process. You can see just in a few strokes that the um, the oil really brings out the, the grain. Okay, now I've applied uh, two cats of oil, um, just about half an hour apart. I've um, let the second coat dry for just you know, five or ten minutes. You don't want it to dry too much. And now we can start the uh, burnishing process. Uh, so what I'm going to do for the burnishing process, I've got some 600 grit sandpaper. And we're just going to rub the oil. And what's going to happen is any of the fine sawdust, is going to just work its way into the grain or any imperfections. Um, this is a good technique if you've got any open grain woods. Um, this is pine, it's, not, it's fairly closed. It's a, it's not, I don't need, think I'll need too much for it. Um, so we'll just give that a good rub over everywhere and get a nice uh, sh shine to it and then we can uh, bring it up to a satin finish after that. So I'm using uh, organ oil, hard burnishing oil, but there's uh, quite a few brands to choose from. Okay, so now I've given it a good go over with uh, 400 and then 600 grit, and it's got a pretty good shine on it now. Um, so what I've got to do is, just, or just on my power sander, I've got some 1200 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to give it a, a once over to act like a bit of a buff. And then that should finish it off. Um, and then I'll let that dry for 24, 48 hours and then I'll give it a buff with like a, a lamb's wool um, cloth. And that will get it really nice and shiny. Well, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this project. Um, we've got free plans in the description below if you'd like to build it as well. Um, and if you feel inspired to build one, please share it on our Facebook or Google Plus page. I'd love to see it. Um, I hope I've done enough to earn your subscription. If I have, please click here to subscribe to our channel for woodworking videos or click here to, to watch our last video on how to build a workbench. And stick around for some arty farty photos, uh, the close-up of this project after this. Thanks. Thank you.